Hello, Humanistorians. I'm Brian, the host of Humanistory Live Radio. We're going to be doing a giveaway this holiday season to one lucky person. We'll be giving away Bear Dynamic DT770 Pro Studio headphones. And all you have to do is like, share, subscribe, leave comment with your thought, or submit to us the most heart-wrenching and warm story of the season you have had personally happen to you. To submit your story, just go to Humanistory.com and click the submit button. To submit any of your comment or thoughts, simply do so at any of our social media pages or even on the community itself. And good luck. Thank you for listening to Humana Story Live Presents. As you might know, we are funded completely by Humanistorians like yourself. And without the continuous effort and contributions you have made both in the past and present, Humana Story would not be possible. We thank you again for doing your part in keeping this dream a reality. Together, we are the story of humanity, one person at a time. Let's let the show begin. The 2016 presidential elections. For Hillary Clinton, against Donald Trump, or for Donald Trump and against Hillary Clinton. What are your true and honest intellectual thoughts? Let's talk about that. Yeah, let's talk about that. Welcome to Humana Story. Humana Story was built out of the need for human companionship, a togetherness that only comes from people helping others. We wanted to be able to tell our stories and share our expressions with everyone who needs them. By us telling our stories, we're able to share that moment that forever changed who we are. But the idea is not just to tell our story, but to share the journey in how we overcame that moment in our lives, allowing others to read and see the story and connect to the one sharing. Most people want to tell the horrid things, but fail to share the accomplishments. As you matter story, we are not those people. We are strong, the winners, we are the achievers. We believe that sharing our experiences will help someone out there in the same situation and allow them to connect with others that have already conquered their struggle. We give the resource within our stories to help those who otherwise would fall. The help to stand up and face what is in front of them without fear or doubt. We believe everyone has the ability to succeed in life. If you are alive on this little rock hurtling through the endless void we call the universe, you are a Humana story. How much of one is up to you? Hello, Humana Storians, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Humana Story Live, Coffee with Humana Story. This is episode number 58. I am Brian, your host. I am joined by Thelma and Louise. This is the lighthearted show where we actually force our hosts to read your comments from other previous Humana Story activities and then discuss them while you're tied to a chair and beat into submission with a bonsai tree. If they're good, I will read them on the air, and if they are bad, Thelma and Louise will read them on the air. Our sponsored music of the day is actually contributed by a gentleman that goes by the pseudonym Golly Music. And he can be found at humanastory.com. Coffee with Humana Story is the unscripted show whose theme is created by members for members and involves Humana Story members from around the world. We also have the unfortunate soul, Butch Cassidy. And if you can't find the show, you're probably using a candle somewhere in the Everglades. Everglades somewhere off grid i think she writes them like this to mess me up. i was about to say yes. evergrades what are you asian more importantly the more you weigh the harder you are to kidnap so eat more peanut butter cups today's questions will be answered from our twitter account at humana story that's h-u-m-a-n-a-s-t-o-r-y mark's a dingleberry and if you still love snail mail <laughs> You can still send out your goodies and information at P.O. Box 712-151, Santee, California, 92072-2151. Sounds like for a second there you were trying to sneak in a uh, subliminal hot sex message. I don't know what you're talking about, Dingleberry. <laughs> uh, if, <laughs> if you feel like voicing your opinions, you can do so with a dedicated theme and open up with your statement. Head to humanastory.com for details. You can join in our holiday giveaway. It is currently running and will continue to do so 
until December 15th, 2016. The winner will be chosen on the 15th, and it will be displayed at our site, HumanaStory.com. You can see our service announcement number four for details located on the contest section of our website. Today's theme. That's a question oh, let me of- guess. Let me guess. Hang on. Is it the election? No. <gasps> it's a question of politics. What All is right. your intellectual thoughts on Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton? Now, you guys can't say anything till the next section, so... <laughs> Wait, you guys, who guys? Me guys? Well, that would be you. You're Butch Cassidy, and Thelma right. and Louise are back here. That's uh, right. While Thelma is. I don't know what You're Louise is You're kind of mixing doing. movies there. <laughs> Butch Cassidy and Thelma and Louise. I'm here. <laughs> have, you even, have you even seen Butch Cassidy and the Sun Dance Kid? Why do you got to bring this up into it? You're going to make me watch it? You've never seen it? It's, no, probably, it's one of the finest westerns ever made. Tell me about it. Well, it stars uh, Paul Newman and Robert Redford as Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. And it was shot, I think, in 1968, 1970 uh, on location in parts of Colorado and, you know, the West. And it's a brilliant, brilliant movie. It's it's a wonderful look at the, you know, how the West kind of faded away and really? the gunslinger and the bandits. Yeah, well, now we have to watch it. Great movie. S- spectacular movie. You'll love it. I'm Everyone writing it down seen. right now as we talk. <laughs> And by and well, while well, we're at it, have you seen Thelma and, Thelma and Louise? Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Oh yes, I have. <laughs> no, not really. I haven't seen that either. You got. But let's you know. Let's run a list of movies that Brian needs to watch. Well, there's there's two of them right there. Thelma and Louise. Uh, I don't know if it won. I don't think it won the Oscar that year for Best Picture, but it was it was up there. It was uh, great. Kind of had a western feel to it. A little bit, but, yeah. Women, female empowerment. Uh, a lot of neat messages in it, but I won't give it away. So but, I guess the next question of the day would be, what do you guys think of uh, Thelma and Louise and Butchity, Butch Cassidy in the Sunday? <laughs> Butch Cassidy. Oh, because we can't talk about politics for the next yeah. section? It, well, <laughs> yeah, well, you can talk about politics all you want. I know you, uh, I know you supported Hillary. <laughs> Don't start with me. You want guns taken away. Actually, you said you wanted to own a gun store at one time. I was about to say, yeah. So if I owned, wanted to own, it was one of my only things I didn't accomplish in my life, which was owning a gun shop. Do you ever plan on it? Do I still ever plan on doing it? My mom wants to own a gun shop, too. I, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to say, you know, Christina, you got some competition if, uh, I know, right? if his mom wants to run a gun shop. It's no. the... Uh, no, I, I can't because of the uh, well, uh, federal I, stuff. I guess the cat's out of the bag. Yes, everybody. One of my co-hosts is my mother. She won't leave me alone. <laughs> so, uh, how's Canada? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mean that from the election. I'm not saying that you said you were going to move to Canada if Trump No, won. I wasn't. I, gonna, no, it's, <laughs> it's You were up it's, there. It's coincidental yes. that uh, I have been spending quite a bit of time up in Victoria, Canada, uh, because my girlfriend lives up there in Victoria, which is just west of Vancouver. And it's really nice. So do I encourage Americans to move there because the, uh, because of the election? Yes. Uh, not necessarily, but if you're going to move somewhere, that is probably the easiest transition because, you know, they speak English, the, the currencies are very similar, and 90% of the products that they have in, in stores are American. Based, all you know, all the bleeding heart libertards leave now. No, you gotta remember, man. Can we talk about this, or are we not allowed to talk about this? <laughs> no, you only got you only got about a minute left. The Republicans, as happy as they are about this, the Democrats are crushed. Wait, wait. Mom, what do you think? Go. What do I think about what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're actually heading into a new segment, guys. This one's actually really cool. If I can find the paperwork before it starts, we're okay. Marilyn, yes. you have a couple tiny tidbits you want to give to the people of the world. And I even gave you soft music to do so. If you take your toe, the tip of your toe, and the back of your heel, and put it on your forearm, right under your wrist, (laughs) and up to your elbow, it's the same size. There you go. <laughs> your, your applause is so unbelievably delayed. <laughs> Seriously, dude. 
Can you not get it going? I don't. I, I did. I just don't know how to make you hear it. Uh, oh, okay. So it's gonna be in the. It's gonna be in the, uh, the so... final cut. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. What other one you got? Okay. If you take seltzer water and put syrup, flavored syrup in it, then you have flavored seltzer water. Uh. <laughs> 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 all right wow all right, so that, are... sorry I, I, I know where she was going but it, it, she kind of made it sound like yeah you, you know if you put ketchup on pancakes <laughs> you got ketchup flavored pancakes <laughs> all right so those are Marilyn's tiny tidbits uh, we're going to be doing that segment now <laughs> but we have to we, you know we're going to keep uh, comments with Mark which oh by the way I do believe we have some comments here hit it Hit it. Okay, this is from Gali Music. Um, from, at YouTube, reference from Mark, Meet Mark Case Sergeant. This other, I can't pronounce this name. Tizana D. Gabriel, reference from YouTube. Hey, Mom. Huh? Why do you look at me when you're saying I can't pronounce this name? <laughs> If you can't pronounce it, how am I supposed to? Okay, the refer- reference from Serenity by Humana Story, Episode 1. Picture and music, perfect combination. Yeah, but Mark who said Sargent. it? She already said it. Huh? What? <laughs> when? What are you talking about? That's oh. the one that she couldn't pronounce, remember? Where are you guys at? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you at? <laughs> Mark, read the next comment. No, See, in, no, the ho- in Hollywood, this is what's known as not everyone's on the same page, literally. <laughs> I guess, are you I, looking I at have, the same thing what, I am? I I'm have. on page six. Where are you? At? I'm on 12. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have 12. Yeah, and then you ask me to read something. I literally have no pages in front of me. All You, you three people are in the same room. <laughs> well, speaking I'm, of Mark Sargent, I think we have a comment from him, don't we? Yes, we do. Yeah, he should know what it says already. Go ahead. It says, uh, location YouTube, reference from Meet Mark K. Sergeant. No, you know what? Listen to this. This, 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 is, this is him complimenting himself. Thanks very much for this, Brian. You're a kind and good friend, even if you haven't come 100% to... That would be the flat earth. By the way, Mom, yes. we still have to talk to you about that. <laughs> about what? About the, our love that shall not be named. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? I look, I don't mind saying it, Brian. One of these days, you're going to have to admit it to yourself. Be true to yourself, Brian. What? <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> All right, we have one more comment. I'm. Well, you're making it hard for me to argue the points. <laughs> oh, I'm making it hard already. <laughs> Whoa. Your mom's still not listening, right? Yeah, I am. Oh, crap. Oh, this is going to be great. All, All right. right. So <laughs> one more comment to go, it's... folks, from Jeffrey Frazier. Location Facebook, referencing if time travel were possible, when, why? Of course it's possible. How else did the writers of Back to the Future predict the Cubs winning? Well, it wasn't a four-game sweep. They didn't play against Miami, wrong league, and they were a year off. But hey, still pretty remarkable. I guess we can blame the differences on the Mandela effect or on old Biff stealing the DeLorean. See, I always thought it was the Mandela effect. The Mandela? What do you think of the Mandela effect? The Mandelta effect? The hmm. Mandela effect. The Mandingo effect. That's oh the street Oh, my version. God. <laughs> Mandingo. <laughs> wow. Okay, what about my ding-dong effect? Okay, so... <laughs> wow, nice slipping in these subliminal <laughs> spot sex messages. Awesome. <sighs> Hot sex. <laughs> yeah, that was so what? real subtle. Oh, yeah, this is yeah. Okay, so this show has officially taken a turn for the worse. But... <laughs> and mom's We're... still listening. <laughs> Man, oh, you're making me sweat here. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Right, Ryan, so... don't tell her about us. Don't do it. <laughs> We're just gonna keep it okay, and that's just the way it's gonna be, guys. We just you know, it's keep really quiet there, Mark. <laughs> Things you say. Oh, <laughs> All right. So the Mandela effect, what do you think? Go. It's the toughest conspiracy to prove because everything's been erased. It's like the uh, the Groundhog Day 
slash Stargate, you know, day with the repeats itself. You there's no record of it. Are you saying that the Mandela effect is like the movie Groundhog Day? You know, in a way it is because in Groundhog Day, you're in a time loop and you're living the same day over and over again. But nobody else is. So you're remembering different things every day, well, but everybody the... else is only remembering one thing. And so I, I'm try, it's, the, it's the closest thing I can do to compare it to the Mandela Effect, because I don't think we've ever had a movie you... officially about the Mandela Effect. So which... you have 15 seconds to answer this. Do you believe in that? The Mandela Effect? Yes, I do, but there's no way to prove it. Humana's story is the story of humanity, one person at a time. We believe each person has a story to tell, and each story shapes that person into who they are today. Collectively, and more importantly, each and every person's story shapes this little blue rock we call home. We are all together whether we like it or not. We also believe that your unique story might just help someone else traveling down your pathway in life. You might be their guide through this rough time. We are always looking for more exciting stories to share with the world. If you've got one, come share it with us today. Want to voice your opinion on our shows? Feel you have a voice that matters? Come have your say with a dedicated theme found on Humanistory.com. With a dedicated theme, we open our Coffee with Humanistory shows with what you had to say and give you credit for not only contributing to our cause, but voicing your thoughts to us and choosing the theme of the day. Listening to Coffee with the Man Story, segment two, episode number 58. And uh, today's theme is a question of politics. And the question of the day for all three of you crazy, crazy people is what are your intellectual thoughts on Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton? Now, I showed you guys all the videos that I looked at. At first, I want to know what you think, Christina. All right. So my viewpoint on all this, I haven't really followed the elections very closely, so I don't know all the different points and all the propositions and all that that was going on. But I do feel that, you know, whichever party you did vote for, I just don't like the idea of people voting for something just because, like, say, Hillary was a woman or because... You know, Trump's going to build a wall or it's, it's got to be voting for more than that. You got to dig deep into the actual reasons for people um, for the, their running and becoming president before you just vote for any other person. So that's my issue is a lot of people are are coming back at others like, oh, you're a Trump supporter. So now you're automatically racist and you should we're all going to move out of the country. And I think that's a little bizarre and I don't think that it needs to be that extreme. I think people are taking it a little bit too far. Go, Mom. Okay. <clears throat> Marilyn, <I'm>... Marilyn. <clears throat> Go, Marilyn. Yeah. This election, they were really cutting each other's throats worse than what it's usually been. And it went all the way down to the wire. They didn't stop. And, Mark, what do you think? Well, um, <laughs> here's the thing. Okay, one, I, I, I think I've publicly stated that I've never voted for anything in my life because I think the illusion of choice, which is the American political system, is not worth our time. That being said, it I've never seen an election where two candidates were hated almost equally on both sides. Republicans... Not only did they hate Hillary Clinton, but they hated, you know, Trump to a certain point, you know, degree. And the same thing on the, the Democratic side. So and I, I tried to say that in, in my show, I said, look, this can't be what America has come to, that our choices for presidents of the United States were the jilted wife of an ex-president or a reality television star. The, I, I can't it's, it's hard for me to believe that those were the choices. And still, even now, you know, watching watching Trump walk through the White House today was so surreal. But I think I would have felt the same same way with Hillary. Also, you know, Trump is unique in that 
you know, at least Hillary, you know, served public office and, and she was secretary, secretary of state, if I'm not mistaken. And she was doing all these other things. You know, she's been political her whole entire life. Trump wasn't political at all, with the exception of the palms he greased. Uh, this is his third marriage. She's 20, what is it, uh, 47, he's 70. She's 47, he's 70. So, you know, but, you know, he's she's the quintessential trophy wife, which has never happened in, in presidential history. Uh, he's the oldest president in in history to be to be elected, which is amazing. And uh, look, he's not the Donald Trump from the 80s that we knew. You know, if he wanted to run, he should have run in the late 80s, early 90s. And so uh, wh- why there are people protesting protesting the streets? You know, I don't know if they're doing it tonight, but, you know, like Chicago and Seattle and. New York well, and any other place that was heavily Democratic voting, they had every right of, to be upset. What do you think of the video that he had where they show him through the years and he's like literally saying the same thing over and over and over again? Well, I mean, he's consistent, no question. Uh, that's that's not the point. the The point is with all the political powers that are out there, you know, powerhouses. Where did he come from exactly? You know, how how did this that's why the, that's why the Democrats are freaking out right now. They're going, how did this happen? Other people we can kind of understand, you know, certain political figures can, you know, sneak through the lines. But Donald Trump, everybody saw him coming a mile away and the media got it wrong, too. You know, all the exit polls showed that Hillary was going to take it or, or, you know, it wasn't going to be, you know, a decisive win by Trump. And it turns out that a lot of people that were going into the exit polls either ignored the pollsters when they left or they lied. One of the two, kind of like I voted for Trump. I'm not going to tell you anything. And the media is, you know, heavily Democratic leaning and they got it wrong. And so now the media is bitter against him. This is going to be a struggle. No question. I mean, people think, oh, oh, he's going to change America. No, 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 no. He's got he's got enemies <laughs> right out of the, right out of well, the gate. That, and plus, okay, so that brings me to what I was going to say is, is I have a couple of videos that we went off of that no. I was looking into. And the first one was by Rebel Media. So we'll give them the credit, right? Uh, mm-hmm. They they Julian Assange from WikiLeaks, he came out with a bunch of emails. I guess all the 30,000 emails that she was trying to hide. Yeah. And uh, one of them was about spirit cooking. Oh. Sure. And uh, what are your guys' quick thoughts on that? No, oh, I just think it's it's a really it crazy sick. idea, crazy thing that people practice. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't want my president-elect to be associated with something like that, but that's my personal opinion. Mom? I think it was disgusting. If Hillary Clinton wants to be part of it, then so is she. Mark? Uh, the occult. Uh, look, I treat it no different than I do all the goings on at Bohemian Grove. So it's, I don't, they call magic the cheat codes of the world, but I don't think they're real. I think the ritual is just symbolic more than anything else. Do, is it, is it horrifying to the average person on the street? Yes. Uh, do I think it empowers them? Nah, I don't think so. Not very much. I, I don't buy it. If it did, I, I, you know, I mean, I've had tarot cards and Ouija boards and, you know, killed a man just to watch him die. And didn't get anything good out of it. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right, then. <laughs> on that note. <clears throat> Wait, why are you guys laughing? <laughs> <laughs> on, that, on that note, uh, Julian Assange, WikiLeaks, all those emails. And he came out and he's stated, I don't know how, how much he has his ear to the ground, but he's come out and stated that Donald Trump will not make presidency he was not very clear as to would he win the presidency i don't think that's what he meant what do you three think yeah i think that he he meant um that even if he was elected he would not actually make it into the white house so you know like like mark said he's got a lot of enemies so you never know what can happen in this month and a half before he actually steps into the white house i think he meant health wise I don't think Donald Trump is healthy. And I think Ooh. by the time he gets into the election, I mean the the White House, he's going to be pretty sick. He's worn down. Mark. First week of January, I think, is the inauguration. And uh, that's a lot of time between now and then. And anything can happen. If you want to create a lot of chaos, yeah. And here, here's why. I'll do it real quick. 
if something happened to Trump, we'll just throw out an accident there. Let's say he got in a plane crash in his plane, his own personal plane. He got in a plane crash and he died. What happens then? If Pence isn't on that plane with him, does Pence immediately take over? Because people weren't exactly voting for Pence. So will the Republicans demand another election with Hillary running against a different Republican candidate? Would Obama then step in and say, oh, well, I'm going to you know, enact a special amendment and take over as president until you guys can sort out the election thing? Maybe. You know, that is actually a really good question. What happens if he dies before getting into the White House? Mm-hmm. I don't know, I, because it's never happened. I, I think there's a procedure in place. Hey, there's I a first th- time for everything. I think that they uh, technically, I don't think Pence can become president. Because... Well, I, I mean, I'm curious to know what the answer to this question is because uh, all the elite apparently hate him. I don't know how true that is, but so I'm, I'm no, curious. Putin. Putin doesn't hate him. Well, well that's going to bring me to the next question here, which is yeah. Putin gave us Putin, 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 Putin gave a Putin. speech. Hey, you know what? He's a commie. I don't care. Uh, no, <laughs> really, I'm, I'm really kidding. better I'm dead kidding. than I'm red. Kidding. Really, I'm kidding. Mm. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Actually, nice. I think he's kind of a guy that has his ear to the ground. I don't think he's as crazy as people think he is. I think that's our media making that happen. But he did give his speech before everybody else did, and he stands behind Trump and is willing to work out any differences that they might have with us. What do you think of that? Hmm. Christina? Well, I I, I think that's a good thing. If, if anything that comes out of this you know, presidency, if he makes it into the White House, that we don't have to deal with Russia, that's always a good thing. Because Russia can be a, a scary country to deal with. So I would think that would be a positive thing. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> I think it would be a positive thing, too, because Donald Trump would talk to Putin and Hillary looks down at people. She doesn't talk one on one. She just looks down at you. So I think it would be a good thing. Mark. Brian, why you have such a problem with Russia? <laughs> why? Them damn commie bastards. No, I'm what, just... what have we done to you? I, I, th- <laughs> I think nothing. <laughs> I think right. nothing. The, <laughs> the, um, uh, no, no, no. The, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> I don't think that uh, I, I think Putin was the lesser of two evils. Uh, Russia is still, like a lot of the world, is still a very uh, misogynistic culture. And they would still rather have Trump than, no offense to the, the wonderful ladies in the room here, uh, they, he would still rather have Trump than any woman. You know, he, he, I don't think he respects the idea of a queen, and I don't think he respects the idea of a woman president. So Putin's like, yeah, anybody but Hillary. You know, the, you know the rumors that were flying around about that. It's like, if Hillary gets elected, you know, we're scrapping. Well, yeah, but on, on the same token, she's like, we're going to kill Russia. We're going to go after. I mean, she was like, let's go to war, man. I mean, so, uh, I mean, it's short of saying it, that's what she was doing. Oh, which brings pause, me to pause. Trump's speech. Okay. So yeah. he gave a victory speech. And the first person he thanked was Hillary and said, thank you. I respect you. He was humble. He was really humble. He even said thank you to my parents, or his parents, not my parents. I wish he said thank you to my parents, but he <laughs> he said thank you to uh, to his parents, his brother, his sisters, you know, his family. Like, right, he was showing family support, basically. And then when Clinton gave, well, first off, Clinton didn't come out and say anything to her party, the people that helped her. She left them for like eight hours in the rain. And then sent uh, Podesto out to tell them they were going to recount. So she didn't even come out. And she didn't even want to give a speech. But she decided to give one. And she didn't uh, thank him or anything. Like She was just a complete wench. Yeah. And I'm not yeah. saying that because I like Trump. I'm saying that because that's what happened. Yeah. Right? So then now here's my... here's What do you guys think on, on those? Well, I think that... You know, at least Trump was nice enough to say, you know, good run, Hillary, you did a good job, it was a good fight. And, you know, Hillary not coming out and saying anything, that's kind of like being a poor loser. You know, I think that they both, you know, even even though the, the election was kind of crazy and all the stuff that happened, but I think to not come across and say, hey, I appreciate you running against me, you did a good job. I think that that's, you know, being a poor loser. I don't really think that's good. I agree. She is a poor loser. 
he he was sincere in his speech, you know, his, his thank you speech and commenting on her. And but she, everything you hear about her, she's just rude. Uh, I didn't really care. I didn't listen to either con- their concession speeches because I, I was more. I, saw, I, I was more concerned with the bigger picture. Uh, that and, of course, what he's going to do in his first, if he can make it to an inauguration, is he actually going to, everyone's waiting, holding their breath, Is are they actually going to build the wall to Mexico? Most people don't understand that the, um, the, the media thing, that they were dead on. I mean, they were wrong about a lot of stuff, but they were dead on, and that was tensions with Mexico. Well, to, I, I think I mean, he means what he says. I mean, he hasn't lied about it at all. Well, it's just blunt. yeah, but it's one thing to do it. The other thing is got you've got to deal with the other states. Are you going to convince the governor of Texas and Arizona I, and what's down there, New Mexico and the bottom of California to finish, you know, to finish the wall? Go ahead and say you it. Know, say some, it. Brian, some, where you live, San Diego. <laughs> San Diego. Well, I'm just saying. Okay. Okay. So uh, I have a really quick you know, question. The peso, peso hit its hit its all time low. It's twenty to one right now. Oh wow! Oh uh, wow! Somebody go down there, pick up some <laughs> crappy jewelry. So. All right, so you guys have to give your really quick thoughts. You have forty-five seconds. Obama at the beginning, he was like Trump sucks, and then he gave his concessions or his little hey congratulations speech, which was all we should love each other now. What do you guys think on that flip flop? Oh, I just think that's him trying to be a good, have a good name as a president. That's it. Obama, he just was reading what was written down for him. He wasn't sincere. Politicians, lawyers, used car salesmen, chain them all, throw them at the bottom of the ocean. Hi, this is Mark. Please leave a message, and I'll call you back as soon as I get it. Thank you. Have a great day. Have an opinion about today's show? Do you wish to voice your opinion on today's show? Simply call our voice box at 1-619-798-6307 and leave your questions or comments today. Be sure to reference today's show and what episode it is. If the show is aired at the time you call, you might go on live. Humana Story thanks you for listening and your activity within our community. We hope to grow a little each day with the lives of ordinary people doing extraordinary things in life-changing events. 